Good day. Welcome back to the Higher Grounds podcast. Today we want to continue the uh, the subject matter we were dealing with last week. We were talking about uh, the leaving of the IFB and those who are vacating and, and making an exodus from being independent, fundamental Baptists and poking fun at and trying to create a stir in the water about how that all of us are some kind of uh, weird wackos. And so we want to today continue with Brother Michael and Brother Stephen talking about this subject and just dispel some of the things that they are saying. And we want to point light at uh, the directions that some of them have now chosen to go in in light of what the scriptures say. So you stay tuned today to the Higher Grounds podcast. Welcome back to the Higher Grounds podcast. Thank you for joining us today. Appreciate you coming by today. We're going to pick up where we left off on last week, dealing uh, with the subject matter of the leaving, the exodus from the IFB, and we're going to talk about that a little more and uh, deal with some of the things that um, that I think are pertinent uh, to this particular subject matter. So you stay with us over the next uh, 30 minutes. We'll just have a good time together. We have brewed another fresh pot of coffee. Yeah. Matthew, behind the, ca- the camera, he's not only the technical engineer, yeah. uh, he's also the barista for the day. Yeah, but and, he also uh, bought the coffee. That's right. Well, he did the, the, yeah, this particular pot for sure. Yeah. yeah and we're, we're drinking some of the... Uh, the old, uh, old the mermaid. fish woman, the mermaid woman's mermaid coffee, woman's coffee. Yeah. yeah, from over there to the Starbuckies, yeah. But anyway, a uh, good cup of coffee. Uh, had, and I'm, had, I've even frou frouted mine up. Look here, look here. You did what? How about that? I'm trying to, wow, yes, I'm trying to. Times are changing. Um, me and brother, uh, hmm. point Dexter. Here. Dr. Dex. You're fru fruing it up. Mm-hmm. How you doing, Steve? Steve? I'm doing great. Doing great. Glad Good. to be in studio once again. I've uh, been looking forward to getting back. I know five in a row. Five weeks in a row. Five weeks in a row. And uh, so almost just trying to. You never know. I may be, you know, I may be around again. I just, uh, just have to If I've got anything to do with it. If you have anything. That's right. Back around. And um, it is it is sometimes difficult to get all of our schedules lined up, isn't it? Well, that's the way it is with important people. You guys are very, and you, guys are you know the two of you. I, I mean, I'm just a, I just kind of, <laughs> I'm just kind of a thread, you know, kind of like a shoelace in a shoe. It doesn't, you know, it's needed, but the shoe's the main thing. You two guys, are the main thing. I'm just kind of shoelace, kind of bring both sides of you together. Mm. And I just spill my coffee. Go ahead. Yeah, say something good while I say something good while you clean your coffee up. Well, uh, don't waste good coffee. I guess that's what needs to well, be said right there. Thank you, Steve. Right Steve. How you doing, um, Mike? Doing well. I cut doing, you off, didn't I? Hey, right in mid sentence. Yeah. Would you like I, to finish? You know, I, w- I was going to tell this. One of the things about because I get asked a lot about how we're doing and adjusting um, to what uh, to where we live at now. Dip, whole total different area. I don't care. Than Paisland. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but brother Michael and I were talking about this, and uh, and then I started to tell this. I don't know episode or two back. But one one good thing, Christian, brother Tony finished my pastor, and uh, many of you know him. And uh, but also brother, <laughs> also brother Milton Taylor is a member of our church. Yeah, and he lives right. Across, I mean, I live. Just, I love brother Milton. I'm Taylor. telling. You, I live a hundred yards from brother Taylor, and um, and I think we were talking. You were, I know as you were talking about A. W. Tozer mm-hmm. about listening to him pray. And Brother Taylor, you know, will call, and he'll say, you got time to pray. And I'm like, you know, what kind of dummy would not have time to stop? And that's like man, one of the greatest You're met him. privileges oh, yeah. to be around. And uh, he was at our house on Saturday. He took uh, me and Seth for a ride in his roadster. And uh, so when he got done, he came in the house, and um, and he just got down, knelt down on our couch and I had a word of prayer. Yeah. I mean, he touched it. <laughs> he, pre- he prayed, and it was just, uh, it was great. It was a big highlight. So it's a joy Man. to get to be around. You know, I know many of it in my pastor, but I don't know, many people may not, may not know that Brother Taylor goes to our church. Brother Milton and, Taylor uh, is as fine a man as there ever yeah, was. Buddy. And when he prays, I don't really do a lot of praying. I just... No, sir. You I listen. just go to listening and just enjoy, you know, getting to be there. I'm Father God. You. That's right. I love it, buddy. <laughs> Amen. I love it. Amen. I love to... Um, Mark Stewart uh, is an avid watcher of the podcast. Yeah. And uh, Brother Mark pastors the Mission Hill Baptist Church over in Hayesville, North Carolina. Sent us in some coffee recently. And uh, Brother Mark uh, does the 
greatest imitation of Milton Taylor mm-hmm. uh, preaching or praying you've ever heard. Mm-hmm. And imitation, you know, is the sincerest form of flattery, and he loves Brother Taylor to death. Mm-hmm. Brother Taylor's just one of those men, he buddy. I don't think there's any better on the subject of Romans 6, 7, and 8 than no, Milton sir. Taylor. And I, I don't think I really knew how great of a preacher was on prophecy. Yes, sir. Until yes, sir. you're talking to him, and then I've heard him bridge recently on it. And uh, yeah, true. Unbelievable yeah. student. Yep. Uh, of books, yes, but sir. also the the Word of God as yes, well. Sir. Just an unbelievable student. Amen. Great, great man, um, and an avid fan of the drag race. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He knows, I mean, he, he knows it. He, he's even got a drag car, yeah. or used to. I guess he's no, still. Yeah. He's, yeah. That's amazing. Great. Amazing. Well, how are you, Doctor Dex? Doing good. Doing good. Excited about another day in studio. Another day and a time to film, and uh, we're ready to get into it. Yeah. yeah. Brother it's, Brother Tornos did a great job last week, just kind of spearheading this, and and uh, so just I think I'm gonna sit stuff. back, drink my coffee, and listen to him today. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah, we are. I'm uh, gonna be like a you know a spectator on the podcast. I'm gonna sit back with you guys at the table, and and I'm just gonna do what y'all do. Just listen. Yeah. And uh, so take it away, Doctor. Give me take it away. Okay. Well, Where were what, we last week? I mean, where, where where did we end exactly? We had been a be, we had begun a podcast uh, talking about um, those who have have saw the need in this hour to um, attempt to start. They say calling attention to um, a they they basically deem it as a problem group, someone yeah. that needs to be um, they need to be vacated. And that group they're referring to is the Independent Fundamental Baptist Churches of mm-hmm. our country. And um, you know they have, uh, as I said last week, they've raised some some uh, issue in about three different categories. One of them, which we covered last week, being that they considered independent, they cultish. considered us very cultish, you know, churches that fall under that umbrella, which is such a mischaracterization. Now, There's so many. Are they of the opinion that that all of us need to go? I think they are pretty much. I mean, and that's the thing that probably has 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 enlightened me to how little they know. Now, some of them supposedly are from families where dad was an evangelist and they travel. They. And you know, but here's the thing about it. You know this well as I do. Most evangelists travel in circles, yeah, yes. and they still travel with just a you know a certain segment mm-hmm. of churches. Right. Yeah, and so uh, you got to be you got to be kind of close minded in a lot of ways to say, yeah, we're going to this. If if I've been exposed to this, let's broad brush the whole crowd. Yeah. They're all the same. Uh, that's a, that's a very small minded. Again, we wouldn't do that with any other. Wouldn't we? Don't particularly like you know if you if you were to use that same brush stroke. Of logic with uh, with sports figures, yeah. you would yeah. see every one of them is perverts. Or every one of shopping. them is absolutely yeah. anything, anything, Any, anything, anything in life. Really. Absolutely, yeah. And so last week we talked about the whole cult, you know, the charge about right. you know being cultish, and uh, you know we've we've covered that. I don't want to rehash that, but I do want to you know take their time, be wise with it, um, and we want to get into the last two reasons, mm-hmm. the main reasons that they are citing or. Or sending out a call, uh, you know, which me personally, I, I'm kind of like, I'm sorry, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta feel like Gamaliel felt whenever you know the calls of Christ started getting traction. I mean, right. even a Pharisee, he said, "Why, why get all up in the air about?" He said, "If if it's not of God, it'll come to naught." Right. You know? well, yeah. Oh yeah. But if it is of God, then you don't want to be on the side of fighting against it. And yeah. that, you know, I think I would be hopefully wise enough to say, I think I'll stand where he's standing at right there uh, concerning this issue. But the second issue they they raise uh, is is something with a little bit of. T- to it that I want to discuss because I know how we feel about it. I know how uh, it's been handled before by others um, that uh, that we're affiliated with. But they talk about the abuse inside mm-hmm. the Independent Fundamental Baptist Churches oh, yeah. of America, and they cite it under basically four subheadings. There is sexual abuse, physical abuse. They talk about mental abuse, and then they even talk about spiritual abuse. Yeah. What would they define spiritual abuse? As? Well, let me hang on. We'll real, real, I'll get there just momentarily. But let me first go on camera, and I think I. Can speak for everybody at this table uh, pretty bluntly that we are 100% against and condemn uh, any kind of sexual abuse. Sure. We believe there are really are victims of sexual abuse. Absolutely. It's egregious. We believe it's right. bi- biblically disqualifying. Right. It should be handled firmly from the scriptures. And it's up to that local body, if they want to remain in good standings, mm-hmm. we believe with God, to deal with those things right. e- exponentially. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, feel the same way about physical abuse. If yeah. physical abuse is happening in any ministry, in any form or fashion, I don't care if you're independent Baptist or not, what the name of your church is, how many you run, 
we believe the long arm of the law as, mm -hmm. as, as well as the Amen. long arm of the church should come down upon you uh, and you should, you should pay for your crimes. Mm -hmm. That's where we at the Higher Grounds Podcast stand. That is where, and I'll say this emphatically, the majority of independent fundamental Baptist pastors stand. Right. Sure. Now, will you right. find some that are weak and some that are have pledged their soul to an institution? Yeah, you will. Oh, yeah. But you'll find that in any form of fashion where people are. Some people yeah. are just so weak. Sure in their personal disposition, that they're not going to be willing to grab that bull by the horns. Absolutely. But that's not the independent Baptist that we are, and that's not those that we run with, right? Right. And so we do condemn that. Now, let's get back to the mental abuse that you're talking about, because when they talk about mental abuse, mm -hmm. a lot of what I'm hearing them talk about is they feel like that when preaching is firm, mm -hmm. painting one in a box of meaning, okay, here's what the, thus said the Lord and whenever Joshua makes the statement, you know, choose you this day, mm -hmm. that there is a form of mental abuse taking place. You know, yeah. they don't they don't like the fact that a preacher says, well, this is what the word of God says, or these are principles that should be present in our lives. And if you're not if you're not willing to walk in this way, then you're not willing to pay the price to walk with God. Those, oh, yeah. you know, they feel like it's mentally abusive and they say that people are are just being crippled, you know, because of the expectations and the weight that independent Baptist churches put on them. And um, you know, I uh, it's, you know, yeah, there may be some ministers out there who who step way outside the scriptures. Uh, you know, I've heard of I've heard of horror cases where some pastors want to see the W twos of their people. Uh, I've heard of horror cases where some guys want to be able to come into one's home and walk. I don't, I, don't I don't know anybody. Know anybody I, they're just stories that. to me. I've never even validated their truth. But but I would just look at the man of that home and say, uh, sir, what is your problem? Because I would meet the pastor at the door and very lovingly say, uh, no. That's right. <laughs> and uh, bye. Yeah. I mean, it'd be that simple. Exactly. That cut and dry. Right. Never I don't that. You know, I'm going to give yeah. you my W-2. I give it to my accountant. You know? uh, that's between me and God. It's yeah. just that simple. Yeah, no, um, no, real, no real man of God would do that anyway. No real man of God would do that. And I no. understand there are some who stretch scriptures about touching up the Lord's anointed. And they have painted somewhat of a ministry where the man that stands behind the pulpit is unquestionable. Uh, well, that and that he, you know, no one could ever bring up an issue uh, about him. But we know that's not what the Bible teaches. No. We know the Bible teaches that we that sin, if we're in the ministry or to be rebuked before all that other ministers may fear. We understand that also because of the fishbowl we live in, that that God says that against that elder receive not accusation mm -hmm. except to be before two or three witnesses. Right. So in God's word, God holds us to a high accountability. Yeah, right. Okay? And we've we're, dealt with that on the podcast. Yeah, we're, we're accountable to our God. We're accountable to the people we pastor. Mm -hmm. right. We're accountable to each right. other, right? right. And then, but on the flip side, also, just everybody gets a little burn in their saddle, gets a little grit in their crawl, can't turn around and bring some yeah. silly accusation against right. the man of God, or the man will be beat up all the time for no reason. Right. Sure. So here's what we say, okay? Uh, have there been abuses in IFB churches? I yes. guess. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, there has been. Uh, sure. There's no doubt. I mean, you not, go the, not among anybody we really no, know, but... Not yeah. really. Yeah, there has been. But when you say it's in most, I say not even close. Right. You're a moron. I'm going to have to sound the horn and say there's absolutely no... Now, if you look at the Twitter feeds and you mm -hmm. look at the websites that are, their, their whole purpose... Uh, Talking about existing, the non websites yeah, well, that, yeah, yeah. that are smacking in the teeth stupidity? The Annans. And yes. they're out there and they're they're always featuring... I mean, they're dedicated to independent Baptist sermon clips and independent Baptist guys doing crazy stuff. What I'd basically have to say would be this. You ever notice that there's usually only a handful of preachers they feature? Yeah, exactly. I, I would say less than 10. Oh, I would say for the most part they exist because... Now, here's my thing. When you feature those guys, and then you turn around and say, yeah, this is how they are. This is the whole crowd. It's a systemic problem. They use that word loosely. It's a systemic problem. This is what I trial not. Yes. That's not who we are. That's and, exactly may I, right. and I'll go on camera and even plead this today. I wonder if you had a clip of Jesus turning over the tables mm. or a clip of Moses breaking the tablets. Wow. If you could say, now, this is who they are. Would that really be ministerially who they were? No. 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 no those are very isolated incidents. Now, I'm not saying some of the guys they're they're jumping on don't need jumping on. I'm right. not saying some of the guys that they're saying this is who these people are. That's fine. But let that ministry and that man have to stand on his own two feet. That's right. Don't throw us all in the same That's pot right. Right. because that is not generally how independent Baptist pastors, preachers, or churches right. actually are. Well, religious stupidity needs to be smacked in the mouth yes. and it needs to be sure. exposed. But I want to say this, as we've said before, if you're going to expose it, um, be enough of a man to put your name on it. 
Yes, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. If you put your name on it, you're done. It, you yeah. Hear it. And here's what we know. Uh, if a church has been doctrinally, you know, brought along and nurtured, it'll know that that church has the right mm-hmm. Amen. and the responsibility Amen. to deal with their stuff in-house. Sure. And they That's should. what church discipline's about. Right, right. And, uh, and nobody in that body is, is, uh, is, 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 is in a position where they can't be dealt with. Mm-hmm. So we understand uh, how those things go. But I also know this. Of the of the supposed folks out there um, who, and I'm not talking about the sexual abuse anymore. Right. I'm not talking even about the physical abuse. I'm talking about this mental and spiritual abuse and those kinds of things that they say are reasons to abandon, our, you know, the independent mm-hmm. Baptist churches. For those uh, that that are out there that have supposedly have a story to tell, some of them are legit, okay, but there are also no doubt many, several, mm-hmm. who the preacher preached something. I don't like it. You're now my enemy, mm-hmm. and I'm going to make it my life's mission to fight you on that particular truth you stand uh, for. Is that not right? what Paul said? Have, I, have I not become your enemy because I've, because have I, I become your enemy because I've told you the truth? I tell you the truth, right? So, with that being said, let, let me just real quickly before we move to the last particular area that they seem to be screaming about. They say that independent Baptist churches in the area of abuse have systemic problems. Okay, now if you study if you study uh, you know the, the geographical uh, evidence or, or how many churches we have say just in America mm-hmm. somewhere between 3000 3500 i believe last episode i tagged it at 3500 mm-hmm. but for numbers sake i would say let's just say use 3000 nice round number okay mm-hmm. all right can you for these people that are screaming a systemic problem in the independent fundamental baptist churches can you name 30 pastors and churches in scandal? Mm, okay. Wow. If you can, you have named 1% of who we are. Right. Hang on a second now. Okay. Say it again. If you can name 30 pastors and churches in scandal, abuse scandal, whether it be sexual, physical, whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. you have successfully named that we have a 1% issue among independent <laughs> fundamental Baptist churches. Now, to get to 5%, you now have to name 150 pastors or independent Baptist churches in scandal. Wow. And even at 5%, it's not systemic. Mm-hmm. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, buddy. And so what we've got here is you've got guys blowing a horn for no reason at all. Not that you shouldn't point out the egregiousness of some of the areas. Right. Of issue. Oh, yeah. Fine. Let's deal with it. We'll be on your side. We'll be yeah. blowing the horn with you. Mm-hmm. But, the, but problem, the, the problem is not... Systemic. No. Here's the problem, okay? We now have a major problem in our educational system in America Mm -hmm. with educators committing impropriety with Uh students. Where is the bannering call to shut down the educational system? Right, right. Listen, not only that, but you have the same thing in corporate America. Absolutely. I mean, all the time. Just I mean, stealing money, you know, uh, you know, uh, insider trading, all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff. Where is the call from these great crusaders of truth mm-hmm. to shut down corporate America? It doesn't exist, okay? And, and look, I understand, the, I understand the call to shut down the Catholic Church. It's a political machine from the top down. Yeah, buddy. It is absolutely infiltrated mm-hmm. with decades and decades. Absolutely. And it's, we're not talking about 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. We're talking about parishes around the country. We're talking about them having to pay tens us money. of thousands Tens of, of thousands. Now, that oh, absolutely. is systemic. a systemic problem, yes, all right? Sir. With that being said, and, and, and we'll have, we got to move along quickly here, but I think about this, okay? And they say, oh, we should leave, you should leave. You should leave. You should leave. Okay. Well, let's just say, let's just give you an illustration. Let's just say, Brother Stephen, I love to eat at a certain chain restaurant. Mm-hmm. And we walk into a certain chain restaurant, and that restaurant we see on the wall has a D rating. Mm-hmm. Should I never go to that chain restaurant again? Mm-hmm. Or should I just go to the next town over and walk into that same chain restaurant where they've got an A rating oh, and yeah. eat there? Right. That's where our churches are. Independent Baptist churches are the same. That's right. We're independent Baptists. That's going to tell you mostly what we believe doctrinally. Yes, sir. You may have bad leadership in a church, which gives it a D rating, mm-hmm. just like you might have bad management in a restaurant that gives it a D rating. But I'm not going over to something just called restaurant, or I'm not never eating at my favorite. Amen. I'm going to the one with the A rating. Yeah, Amen. Good, going down the road where they got good management, going down Amen. the road where they got good leadership, yes, and I'm going to sit down, and I'm going to walk with God, get fed from God's Word, and serve with that local body of independent Baptist believers Great. just like we are. Okay? Anybody got anything to say before we move to the last one? No, I, I just believe you're correct. Uh, I mean, the, the entire... The, the entire um, uh, argument seems to me to be uh, undefendable in right. a logical debate. It is. Absolutely, it is. It is. It don't make sense nowhere no. else. Yeah. So, but anyway, so that's uh, that was number two. Number three. Lastly, here okay. this will be the last one. We'll try to wrap the podcast up. The last area that they really use as a bantering mm-hmm. call is the subject of legalism. Yeah, uh, of course we're we're getting so used to hearing that word, and we understand it's so misdefined. And, and I want to go on record and say this: I've been an independent Baptist now for mm-hmm. twenty one years. 
I have never in my 21 years heard an independent Baptist preacher preach a legalistic sermon. And here's why. I've never heard one say that in order to be saved, you trust Christ and then you do such and so. Mm-hmm. That's right. And if you don't do such and so, you're not saved. Now, maybe you've heard one or been in, you know, I've if never. you have, I want to hear the clip. Yeah. I mean, let's call him out. Let's let's put his name out. That's we can right. do it on social media. Let's do it. But I'm afraid that that's not what you're hearing. No. Nope. Nope. What they're saying is New this, definition. is that if you preach after you get saved, that you should live by the book. Mm-hmm. You should have biblical standards, principles right. that rule your life. Then right. all of a sudden, you are the legalist. Now, here's where they cross the line. They are saying, after they've redefined legalism. Right, and they have. And they have. And they've said all these independent Baptists that preach these things are under that umbrella. Then they've started to flirt with getting on the edge of saying they're preaching another gospel. Mm-hmm. Now, let me caution you. i got you. an issue with that. Let me caution you right here. You are then telling everybody else to run from this group of people Mm -hmm. because the gospel they preach is illegitimate and you can't get saved there. Wow. That's heresy. Yes, sir. And if you are personally, I'm just going to say this, if you are so uh, twisted and warped in your mind that yes, what you've had to construct as an argument against these people you're against, you got more problems than we can talk about in a podcast. Isn't that bordering on blasphemy of the Holy Ghost? Well, I mean, here's the thing about it. All those people that the independent Baptists have been mm-hmm. reaching for decades now, right. you're telling me all those right. people are illegitimate in their in- conversion? Including wow. some of your moms and dads. Oh, not uh-huh. only their moms and dads, but I've listened to them sit there and tell how they got saved from most of that's them because exactly. of the ministry yes, of an independent right. Baptist church that's and pastor. Right. And most of them time, they'll blast it on a podcast, turn around and apologize later saying, I'm not totally against it. I've got help there. Well, what are you then besides confused? Mm-hmm. That's right. You see what I'm saying? A double-minded man. Is unstable in all of his good ways. Good enough to okay? get saved in, good enough to start your ministry in, yeah. good enough to be raised in, but now, now all of a sudden not good enough for you. Exactly. Here's the thing about it that is ironic to me. Boy, they love that book of Galatians. You know, that's that book where Paul just punches legalism in the teeth. Yeah. I'll agree with you wholeheartedly, okay? But I'll say this right here. For the most part, if you don't know the truth about it, the ones I've, 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 I've researched, listened to, there is a there is a movement today with people who are uh, in a battle with clothing. Mm-hmm. They're, they're terrified of clothes, and anybody that tries to preach, you know, it's a good idea to wear some, and it's even <laughs> yeah. a good idea, to, you know, to yeah. be distinctive about it. Yeah, yeah. oh, and it just tears their nerves about, yes. up. All oh, they. But the same man that addressed that issue at Galatia is the same one that told Timothy that it was a. Modesty was a good idea. Mm-hmm. Yes. So evidently, modesty has nothing to do with legalism, and it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Right. Or they're wrong in their position doctrinally about it. They are wrong. Yeah, they are exactly very wrong right. about it. Okay. Now, with that being said, let, let's just have a little fun. You have a little fun? Sure. Absolutely. Let's, let's take the Bible and have a little fun. They say any extracurricular biblical principle that a man preaches or talks about paints him in the shadow of basically being a heretic mm-hmm. and misleading people in the Bible. Okay. But if I remember correctly in the Word of God, the Apostle Paul, when he was at Corinth, if my memory serves me correctly, was dealing with an issue where a young convert had a problem eating meat right. that was bought at the market. That's right. That was previously offered in an right. out of worship mm-hmm. service. That's right. Okay? And Paul made this statement. This is the same man that said, be ye followers of me to the same people as I'm of Christ. Mm-hmm. He made this statement. He said, if meat make the world to offend, I will eat, no, eat meat no meat while the world stands. That's right. Now let's stop right here. We understand that there it was no dietary law in place. Mm-hmm. Right. Yet Paul said because he was a mature Christian, he understood that his liberty in That's Christ right. should never be a stumbling block to other That's believers. Exactly right. He said, I will impose upon myself a principle of living right. that will help the cause of Christ and help those young believers rather than just me exercise my right. liberty. And sure. he, he was saying in that text, even though this principle may not be necessary, yeah. it is necessary for the for the health of the entire body, mm-hmm. I'm not to be concerned with myself. Yes. I'm to be living my life for others. That's exactly right. Now, why are we not blowing the horn on Paul? Why yeah. are they not blowing the horn on Paul? Yeah. Because when they say... Yeah, yeah he's a legalist. Them, he's a legalist. Yeah, those principles you boys in the IFB, y'all promote, and y'all ain't got Bible for them. Did Paul have any Bible for, 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 for imposing <laughs> dietary laws on himself? Absolutely <laughs> not. He didn't have any Bible for that. But it was a principle That's that right. he exactly applied right. to the life that was good for God's people. Now, I want to end it on this note mm-hmm. right here. I know we're running out of time. So I'm listening to this podcast, right? And it was around a Christmas time podcast. And uh, two of the, it was a three host panel like ours. And two of those hosts had went in together and bought one of the other hosts who evidently was not ashamed of this. He had made it known. He was a, he was a fan of Garth Brooks. 
the country musician. And they had bought him a box set of Garth CDs, evidently, for Christmas. And they were all hooping and hollering like that was a good thing. And I know they passed, or their people are listening to this. And these are former independent Baptist former guys. Former independent Baptist guys, okay? And, uh, and then he turns around and says, oh, it gets better than that. My wife bought us tickets to see Garth in concert. Now, here's where I'm standing. You want, you're looking at a guy that, before he got saved, was a huge Garth fan. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I was, it loved Garth Brooks' music. I get saved, and the Lord starts dealing with me about getting it out of my life because of the effect or impact it's going to have. It's going, it wouldn't take my salvation, but it sure would produce carnality. Mm-hmm. And you didn't hear a Garth Brooks' message. I never heard a Garth Brooks' message, but here's what I knew. I knew that friends in low places wasn't talking about a prayer partner. Yeah. Them. I, right. I knew that the Thunder Rolls wasn't talking about nothing but a bunch of infidelity uh-huh. in a marriage relationship, and a man kills his wife over it. I knew that give me two pina coladas wasn't a drink you took at communion. Uh-huh. Right. So what right. I'm saying is this right here. What that poor brother needs in his life is a little legalism. Yeah. 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 He needs enough legalism yeah. to get that out of his life. Not only that, but not That's to right. promote it in front of unbelievers That's and right. or especially young converts That's right. who it'll hurt. Yes, so. That's right. And so, you know, I, I just know this. I know what the Word of God says. And you, can go, you don't have to look no farther than John, First John chapter 2, where he talks about that he that saith he know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. Right. He also goes on in chapter five of the same of the same book and talks about that keeping the commandments of God are not grievous to That's a believer. Right. I can just say That's this: right. God's word hadn't been a weight or a burden to me. No, sir. And I'm glad I found no. men and a movement, Amen. if you want to call it that, Amen. that would preach it because it sure has been a blessing to help in my life. Amen. Amen. Well, I'll be very frank with you. Everything that you said, I wholeheartedly agree with, and the whole issue boils down to this: I simply do not want to be a separated Christian. I want to go to heaven, but I do not want to live a holy, sanctified lifestyle. Yep. Yep. And I'll be honest with you, the importance of the body of Christ is so it is so real to me and so important to me that I I don't I'm not wearing any rings on my fingers right now, but I do wear rings. But if I sat down with a church of God brother or some other brother that that did not have that liberty to wear a wedding ring on his finger mm-hmm. or a class ring on his finger, I wouldn't wear one on mine out of offending taking my liberty and offending that dear sure. brother in the Lord Jesus Absolutely. Christ. Yes. Because he is more important than me. Mm-hmm. Be. I need to view every brother in Christ as yes, being sir. more important than I am yes. instead of viewing everything with my rose colored glasses about what I want to be right for me. Right. Yeah. Yes. You know, that's where we're at though. Yes, sir. And I want to tell you, I appreciate you that's uh, great, brother, leading Mark. us in this direction on this subject. And there could be a lot more said about sure. it. Sure. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, we are in a mess. And I'm glad some of these folks are leaving, just to be honest with mm-hmm. you, because they aren't who we are. Right. From the Higher Grounds Podcast, you have a great day. Mm-hmm.